So I've completed Elden Ring a good couple of times now, and I've even gone out of my way to complete all of the achievements. One achievement of which is obviously to collect all of the legendary armaments or weapons within the game. And I'm sure if you've completed the game yourself, you've probably picked up one or two throughout the playthrough, but if you're like me, you've probably rarely ever actually used them. So in this video, I thought it'd be a good idea to see what actually makes these weapons legendary, and then decide to throw them into a tier list to let you know what I believe is actually the best legendary weapon that you can use throughout the game. And just for a bit of context as well, throughout the video, you're going to be seeing gameplay from New Game Plus 5. That was when I was really actually using the weapons for the first time, apart from a couple. And again, just for context, they're all the plus 10 upgraded variant to make them the maximum damage output that they can be. So of course, if I've got this tier list incredibly wrong, do let me know in the comments down below. And also, if you agree, do get down there to let me know your thoughts and feelings about this particular list. But anyway, enough stalling. Let's jump straight into it. And that number nine is going to be the Eclipse Shuttle. Now, if you couldn't tell, we're going from worst to best. So the Eclipse Shuttle is the worst. And you know that old saying of if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. That should really be the new description of this weapon in game and this is why it's at number 9 because it is god awful. Apart from the fact that the Ash of War applies Death Flare which actually negates 40% of damage negation if that makes sense so you counteract 40% of an enemy's damage negation. The weapon is still statistically the worst in terms of damage output across all of the legendary armaments and is actually really, really far into a playthrough because you need to have access to Castle Soul, which you need to get towards the Fire Giant for. So it's about, say, halfway through, maybe a little bit longer into the playthrough. So it's going to be one of those later weapons that you do pick up. And when you compare it to things like the Rivers of Blood, which you can get in a similar area or at a similar time, this weapon just feels out of place and is just not useful in any sense whatsoever. The only thing I didn't do, and just to note, maybe I'm incredibly wrong, I did not dual wield these because I only picked up the one. So maybe dual wielded, they're absolutely incredible and I'm sure you'll let me know if that's the case, but from what I was using, it just was not usable at all. As much as it hit quickly, it just did bugger all damage and I know that's probably going to be the case even in the first playthrough because like I say the stats are terrible even if you scale it correctly it is not good so uh, yeah stay away from the Eclipse Shuttle and a very very close second for the worst weapon in the list is number eight and that's going to be the Golden Order Greatsword and in all honesty this weapon is just as useless except it does a little bit more damage which is why it pips itself above the Eclipse Shuttle but it's really not any better. It does also have a slight edge over the Eclipse Shuttle where the actual damage it's dealing does bonus damage against the undead and it actually stops skeletons from reviving. And the Ash of War, again, is not really all that powerful, but again, it can clear a nice wave of enemies or if you're coming up against multiple skeletons, you can take them out in one swift move. But again, this weapon was actually one of the last ones I got and it's part of the secret Halid tree area. And it's also a bonus area to get to Melania, so it's an optional area. It's not even part of the story. There's a chance that you might even miss this all completely without obviously looking up a guide. You would think it would probably be a bit better, but in all honesty, it's really really not. But at number 7 things start to look a little bit less bleak and this legendary status of this weapon actually start to become a bit more apparent because at number 7 is going to be the Grafted Blade Greatsword and unlike the previous weapons there's actually a viable use to be using this weapon. The Ash of War actually grants a boost to all of your stats plus 5 much like the, uh, the Godric Great Rune which lasts about 30 seconds but it also increases your poise and allows you to become a little bit of a powerhouse dealing quite a nice hefty amount of damage to the majority of bosses. Unfortunately the damage output is just purely its base stats, there's no status effect on it like fire or electric or anything cool like that and as with the rest of the legendary weapons you can't infuse it with anything else, you can't infuse it with fire or anything like that, it does suffer in the fact that you can't really buff the stats too much. The other good thing going for it as well is you can actually get it in Castle Morn, so it is a fairly early game 
weapon that you can go and pick up all you need to do to defeat the boss in Castle Morn and it is yours so like I say it's fairly easy to obtain and if you can get the right stats early enough to use the weapon it can be useful to like I say grant you that additional plus five boost on your stats and just is a good great sword to use throughout the beginning of the game but other than that it's more than capable of carrying you through to the later stages of the game but it will dip off and you will notice that the weapon's no longer usable for the late game bosses it's better than the golden order greatsword and the shuttle by a country mile so number seven is where this sits but here is where the video gets a little bit more exciting number six the devourer's scepter finally additional fire effect damage something that does a little bit more than just bonking the enemies around the head with its base stats but again unfortunately there are some aspects that let this weapon down which is why it's so low and below average to me on this list like i say the ash of war is very very cool and it is a very nice weapon art that you can use dealing some damage to the immediate effect around you but like i say it's only some it's not astronomical amounts of damage and it's not really viable to use sort of mid boss or in a pvp situation you're just not going to do any damage it takes too much time to use and it leaves you vulnerable however it is another colossal weapon and that's three in a row now for this list if you're keeping count so its base attacks do hefty amount of damage and that extra fire effect does pay dividends in dealing hefty amounts of damage to both bosses and also pvp opponents but as much as the ash of war is cool and sounds menacing being named the devourer of worlds it's really not it's about as menacing as the uk government right now because it's basically the same thing you stamp your authority down do bugger all for <laughs> however long make very very little impact and then bugger off as if nothing happened. So you begin to wonder why you even started the process in the first place. However, unlike the UK government, we're actually gaining uh, some support here on the channel. There's been a lot of you recently that have been subscribing and liking the videos and leaving comments and just genuinely supporting the channel. So I just wanted to say a little thank you for that. But I still have the same quabble from last episode to have with you guys. Mind you, it is getting better. It was 98.7%, I think, but we're still only at 98.3% of you watching the videos that are actually subscribed. What's going on? We're aiming for 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you're one of those 98.3% of people, make sure you become the 1.7% and hit that subscribe button. It's free to do, you can change your mind at any time, but it just means you stay up to date with all the latest content and it makes sure that you never miss a future video. So, why not give it a go? Let's try and get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And of course, if you like this video, hit the like button while you're down there as well. But anyway, getting this back on track, number five, the middle ground, the run of the mill weapon that is not terrible, but not the best out of the nine that we have available to us that's going to be the ruins greatsword and now this is probably the first potentially controversial pick out of the bunch but listen hear me out okay late game and pvp this weapon struggles or at least i struggle with this weapon most bosses and players can dodge the ash of war attack which is its main sort of crutch for heavy damage and the setup time for it is just too long you can see it coming a mile away you can dodge it easily and people like melania and godfrey and marika can just dodge this attack with no problem whatsoever it leaves you vulnerable and it's just overall not good to use however again being a colossal weapon it does deal some heavy damage and the charged heavy attack again has its little extra sort of magic damage that it deals as well so if you can get a combo off with some light attacks and finishing with the heavy attack you can make some easy pickings again with bosses but there are just a few more that i feel are better or at least i'm better at using which is why it finds its place at number five because i know a lot of people love this weapon and i know you're going to shout at me in the comments and say give it a bit more respect but for me it's just like any other great sword i've used in terms of its move set and like i say the ash of war as much as it's cool it is so predictable which is why it's so hard to hit anything off in a pvp situation or with bosses late game so that's why 
it's at number five. So at number four, we find ourselves with the Mario's Executioner's Sword. Of course, this is the only bleed weapon out of the legendary set that you can pick up, and it has an incredibly high DPS. Again, it's Ash of War is the main contribution for that, but with it being bleed and the fact that we can strike off so many attacks in quick succession, the bleed effect just happens so much and most bosses are gone within seconds with successive hits. And this weapon is one of the first on the list that can actually be heavily buffed with things like talismans. Having talismans such as Millicent's Prosthesis, Winged Insignia and Rotten Winged Insignia gives this weapon a hell of a boost. I'm talking sort of 15-20% extra damage per hit. This weapon is capable of carrying you pretty much to the end of the game until you start coming against bosses that are resistant to bleed, but even still for things like Godfrey, the fire giant, anybody with an incredibly high health bar can be made an absolute breeze with this weapon. Like I say, the DPS on it, especially the Ash of War, is just incredible. Again, bleed is just a broken mechanic in this game. Number four is where it sits, mainly due to its bleed effect and how quickly you can delete bosses because that can't be ignored. But now it's for the top three. And just before I let you know what it is, or at least my number three, I have shuffled and reshuffled these weapons a couple of times. And it's always been a toss up between number three and number two in terms of what position to put them in. Finally, or officially, at number three on my list, is going to be the Dark Moon Greatsword. Now, this is obviously the most iconic greatsword throughout From Software's video games. It has always been incredibly useful uh, to get your hand on whichever iteration of the Moonlight Greatsword, or in this case, the Dark Moon Greatsword, in whichever iteration of the Soulsborn games you are playing. And that's no different here. What is probably the best frost weapon or frost infused weapon throughout the game, obviously, you get this by completing Rani's quest. And once you acquire this weapon again this is probably the first weapon out of the list that generally goes yeah i can see why this is a legendary weapon you call upon the moonlight powers to infuse the weapon and with each charged heavy attack that you do you produce a wave of frostbite damage which itself does incredible amounts of damage and causes obviously frostbite buildup, which will deal incredible damage over time and also slows down the opponent. Again, stacking this with the right talismans and the right buffs can turn this into an absolute powerhouse and you can fire off each slash of deadly frostbite damage in quick succession. After you infuse it with the moonlight power, all you have to do is continuously charge your uh, heavy attacks and you can start to unleash a constant wave of deadly frostbite damage. And the fact again it's a colossal weapon, it just deals heavy damage. It's one of the largest in terms of scaling that you can do in terms of the legendary weapon, so it definitely benefits from that as well. And the damage output is just incredible and above and beyond pretty much any other great sword in the game. Of course, not only that, it does get its bonus points for nostalgia being in the game personally. This is the first iteration of the like Moonlight Greatswords or the yeah Dark Moon Greatswords that I've used, but I did have a tremendous amount of fun using it, and it's always been a weapon that I've used, say, once or twice or here and there in each playthrough to utilize that frostbite damage and to just mix up the gameplay where I'm hitting enemies at range or getting up close and personal and just dealing heavy damage no matter what. But as much as it's an iconic weapon, and as much as it's probably one of the best great swords in the game, there are two which I feel are in front of the great swords in terms of my personal favourites. And the one, as I mentioned, that I was always tossing up whether it's second or third, and whether the great sword is actually better than this particular weapon, is going to be the Sword of Night and Flame, which incidentally you pick up pretty much at the very beginning of starting Rani's quest or at least you can get it at the very beginning as much as I knew my number one like I say it was hard to justify or to determine whether this was going to be at second or third when pitting it against the Darkmoon Greatsword but in terms of usefulness and in terms of damage output this does exactly the same as the Darkmoon Greatsword in terms of having multiple ways of using it whether it's close up long range or clearing hordes of enemies much like the darkman greatsword but it does it better mainly 
because you've got two ashes of wars. When guarding, so holding LB or L1, if you then charge it with a quick attack, you will then unleash a Comet Azure that lasts roughly about two seconds, but then if you charge it with a heavy attack, you then unleash a wave of fire which can clear most rooms and most areas of basic enemies. The Comet Azure and also that Death Flame deals incredible amounts of damage as well. Like I say, you can get it much, much earlier than the Dark Moon Greatsword and it scales incredibly across four different stats. So the damage output that you can get out of this thing is astronomical, but it also has one of the largest pools of move sets, having its own quick attacks, its back step moves, obviously its quick flurry of I think five successive light attacks, its charge attack moves, and like I say, the two different Ashes of War that you can deploy at any given time. As much as obviously it scales very highly, it does require you to obviously spread your stats across faith, intelligence, dexterity, and strength in order to scale it fully but if you can acquire it and spread those skill points across those stats it's definitely worth it and where it being so early game as well it's something that you're going to pick up and progress throughout the game with and each upgrade whether it be a smithing table or due to your stats it's going to be noticeable and it's going to be able to carry you throughout the game no problem whatsoever however as much as i've got nothing bad to say about that weapon it does fall to number one. The Bolt of Grand Sax. The only weapon in this list that actually has its own dedicated video on my channel. And ever since I picked up this weapon, it has always, always been part of my builds and it's always been my go-to whenever I'm struggling with a boss or if I just want to have fun progressing through the game. The reason being is mainly due to the Ash of War it's incredibly satisfying destroying enemies with the bolt of grand sack turning it into a huge lightning bolt that you throw at the enemies splitting skulls and just annihilating them with each throw it's got its bonus to ancient dragons and also dragon enemies so in the crumbling azula you pretty much breeze through anything and using it against dragons is obviously incredibly useful and again, stacking it with the right talismans and the right buffs makes this an absolute powerhouse. I will say, its base attack, like moveset, like its thrust abilities, aren't the greatest in terms of damage dealing, but you just can't beat the Ash of War's moveset in terms of just how you annihilate enemies. And the fact that you can dodge them as well when you lift off the ground, if they've got like a low sweeping attack, you can dodge it and then hit them around the back of the head with a massive lightning bolt. I mean, just sounds crazy. It's another weapon that can be missed because if you go too far in the game and turn Lindell into the Ash of Lindell, you actually cannot pick up the weapon anymore. So you would have to obviously go into either New Game Plus or start a new character and drop it to your friend who can drop it to you kind of thing. And if you have missed out, you truly are missing out because it's genuinely the most fun I've ever had in the game using this weapon. And you do genuinely feel like a god when using this weapon. The only real weapon I feel of having that legendary status tied to it is actually the Bolt of Grand Sax because it just, this is one that can knock down bosses as well, staggering them with such ease with each throw of the spear. And like I say, it genuinely makes you feel like you've got godly powers and you're turning into one of these draconic powerhouses with the amount of damage that you deal with each bolt. I could go on for hours and if you want to see a more detailed video, like I say, I do have one on the channel so do go over and have a look at that because like I say, I go into a bit more detail about the actual build and a bit more detail as to actually why this weapon is so good so definitely check that out if you're interested but like i say i'm not going to ramble on too much about it in this video but just to recap here is the list in terms of the weapons that i feel from worst to best for this legendary weapon tier list let me know if i've got something incredibly wrong i can sort of see ruins greatsword 
annoying a lot of people. So uh, yeah, <laughs> let me know if I've got anything in this list incredibly wrong. It will be interesting to know how much you've used these weapons, if at all. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the list. So hopefully you have enjoyed this video, guys. I know it's a bit of a longer one for you guys, but I thought I'd have a bit more of a discussion with you. Again, I haven't made a video like this in a while. I know I made my top five weapons, but that's just in general across the board. Whereas this one was just more so specifically thinking about the legendary weapons that are in the game and just sort of exploring as to what makes them legendary and if they are actually usable at all. Yeah, as I say, hopefully you have enjoyed. If you did, do hit the like button down below. It'll let me know that you have enjoyed this video and you've made it all the way to the end. If you have made it all the way to the end, leave a comment saying Dragon Lord for the Bolt of Grand Sax. I mean, come on, yeah. Leave a comment down below saying Dragon Lord and I'll know you've made it all the way to the end and that'll be greatly appreciated as well. And of course, if you're new and you're part of the 98.3% that aren't subscribed, make sure that's not you. Become one of the less than 2% of you that have subscribed. That way you'll never miss out on a future video. But otherwise, like I say, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have an incredible rest of your days, guys. And I will catch you in the next video of whatever it is that I make. Bye-bye.